Kia ora year 12 and 13 and year 11 and year 10. Um, this question is one for my A-level class tomorrow because I'm going to be away. So if you're in this year's A-level class, please don't watch this until you've had a go at this tomorrow. Um, but then you can go through it. It's also, I think, quite good for level 3 integration. It's probably an excellence, if you're lucky, maybe a high merit question because they give you a hint. So what we have to do is to look at this curve. Um, and the curve is y equals sine cubed 2x, cos cubed 2x. And the shaded region shown is bounded by the curve and the x-axis, and its exact area is denoted by a. So the first thing I think when I look at that is that we don't know the limits of integration that we're going to be using to figure out what a is. Because in part 1, we're told to use a substitution to find the value of a. And you can see that it's 6 marks, so that's quite a lot of work. You don't have to use substitution, you can do it without. But... They've given us that substitution, so that's what I'm going to start with. So we need to know the limits of integration. So those limits are going to be whatever x values make this equal to 0. So the first thing I'll do is I'll solve sine cubed 2x cos cubed 2x equals 0. And I'm looking for the first two solutions to this equation. So either sine cubed 2x equals 0 or cos cubed 2x is equal to 0. Here we've got sine 2x is equal to 0, cube rooting each side. And here we've got cos of 2x is equal to 0. So just really quickly sketching the two curves, we can see that here the first solution happens at x equals 0. And this point here, is pi on 2. So the first solution here is 2x equals pi on 2, x is equal to pi on 4. So that's good, we've got the limits of integration, now we're ready to start to find this integral. And we're going to use the substitution of u equals sine 2x. So if we let u equals sine 2x, du by dx is equal to 2 cos 2x, so we can rewrite du as 2 cos dx, 2x dx. We're going to use that to evaluate this. So we've got the integral of sine cubed 2x cos cubed 2x dx. Okay, so we're not quite there yet. We've got du is equal to 2 cos 2x dx. We could write dx as, or we could write cos of 2x dx is equal to 1 half du. And then we can substitute in, get rid of this in here, and replace it with this. This bit is going to be easy to replace with u, but we're going to have a bit of trouble with this. We also need to change around the limits of integration. So at the moment the limits are between 0 and pi on 4, but that's when we're integrating with respect to x. So I need to switch those over to integrate with respect to u. So my x limits are these, but we know that u is equal to the sine of 2x. So the sine of 2x is sine of pi on 2, which is equal to 1. And the sine of 2x is equal to the sine of 0, which is equal to 0. So we can start to rewrite this integral. And we're going to go quite slowly here. So if this is too slow, just skip ahead a bit. So we've changed the limits of integration. This is equal to u cubed. And then I can split this up into cos squared 2x times cos of 2x dx. And from up here, we knew that this was equal to half du. So let's just leave the cos, of two, cos squared of 2x sitting there and know that we're going to have to come back to that and fix it up times one half du. We've got u is equal to sine of 2x. 
this is my problem thing here, but this is cos squared of 2x. Hopefully, you'll see that if we use the Pythagoras identity, we can fix it up. So cos squared of 2x is equal to 1 minus sine squared of 2x, which is equal to 1 minus u squared. So we're going to take this now and substitute it in here. So let's just put all of that messy working off to the side. Wow, what a big mess. We've got this. So equals the integral from 1 to 0 of u cubed times 1 minus u squared times a half du. Now we're just about ready to go. We're back to a level 2 integration problem. So we've got u cubed minus u to the power of 5, and that's times a half, so we'll pop that out the front, integrated with respect to u. The next bit is really easy. Now we just work out what all of that is. So it's a half times a quarter minus a sixth minus zero minus zero, which gives me a half times, I don't need 24, do I? I need 12 as my common denominator. So three minus two. That gives me a final answer for a of one over 24. And that's the hard part of the question done. Now you can get there if you use your trig identities um, without doing all of the substitution, but the substitution is quite a nice, clean way to do it. Let's go back and look at the second part of the question. Okay, so we've found the shaded area, and the shaded area has a value of 1 over 24. The next thing we're told is given that this next integral, which is the integral between 0 and k pi, so we've got k pi here and 0 here, times the absolute value of the function, we're told that that's equal to 40a. So the absolute value means that this is a, and this is also a and this is a, and so on. So we're trying to figure out how many pi's it's going to take to get to 40 of those. Well, we know that one of them goes from 0 to pi on 4. So by the time we get to 1 pi, we've got 4 of them. So to get to 40a, we're going to have 40 lots of pi on 4, which is 10 pi. So the value of the constant must be k is equal to 10. So that's all there is to the second part, really. OK, um, let me know if you've got questions on that, um, either in class when I'm back on Thursday or send me an email. And you might want to try doing that without using the substitution, just to practice um, other ways that we can integrate it. Thanks for watching. I'll do some more later on.